Hey, it's Jackie and welcome back to my channel for another Daphne from Bridgerton tutorial. My last upload was three wearable Daphne hairstyles and I got a lot of requests on that video to do her ball scene where she has tons of feathers and I love the updo and she wears a pretty natural makeup look throughout the series. So that is what I'm recreating today. I hope you guys enjoy it and if you like these pop culture tutorials, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more pop culture videos every week. And if you ever try out any looks on my channel, be sure to tag me on Instagram so I can feature you. And let's get started. I wanted to share a new favorite product and I picked this up because that girl Shay XO on YouTube raved about it and it's the Pharmacy Honey Halo Ultra Hydrating Moisturizer. My skin's been extra dry and this is so rich. It smells like honey. I love the packaging. So this is a winter skin must have. And I also start by using the Tatcha Silk Peony Melting Eye Cream. Both these products are more on the expensive side, but I do like to invest in a couple skincare products that I love. And now that we are hydrated, I'm using my all-time favorite foundation, the Rare Beauty Liquid Touch Weightless Foundation. Apply in a couple dots and blend into the skin. And this is more light coverage, and my favorite high coverage foundation is the Giorgio Armani um, Power Fabric Longwear Foundation. I find it looks very fresh, but it's a matte finish, so it's great if you have more oily skin. The makeup and hairstylist for Phoebe who plays Daphne is Linda J. Pierce MUA on Instagram and she shares products that she actually used behind the scenes and different photos. So I did pick up some of the actual products, but since I'm a different human, I do different steps to achieve her look like Daphne's skin, which is so glowing and hydrated, I think naturally. Um, Linda said she barely used highlighter on her, but to bring in more of a glow on my skin, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, which is one of my favorite, favorite products. I like to add it to foundation or just bare skin and it really makes foundation look more like skin and really healthy. Even when my skin is pretty clear, on my neck you can see veins sometimes when I have zero self tanner. So I'm adding a bit of foundation and I'm blending down. And then I'm going to brighten up my cheekbones and middle of the jawline under the apples of the cheeks with the L'Oreal Infallible Concealer. I really really like this shade because it's super light but neutral and it has great coverage for darkness under the eyes. Since my skin is dry, I'm adding the Hangover 3-in-1 Replenishing Primer from Too Faced. And Daphne has much more of a slender face than mine and higher cheekbones, so I'm taking a cream contour and moving my cheekbones up slightly and enhancing that apple shape under the cheek. Since this is barely there, I'm only applying a bit and really blending in and I'm creating a softer jawline as well. For blush, I was so excited to pick up the actual blush used, which is the Stila Convertible Lip and Blush Cheek Cream in the shade Lilium, but they didn't sell it at my Sephora, so instead I swapped it for the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blush in the shade Bliss, which is a matte nude pink similar to these pictures of Daphne. I was going to use the new Rare Beauty Stay Vulnerable Melting Cream Blush, but I still prefer the liquid blush. It's super pigmented, I love how it bounces onto the skin, and I prefer this like whipped formula rather than a cream pot blush. So I'm still going to give the melting cream blushes a chance because they look really interesting, but I do love the foundation and original liquid blush the most out of all the Rare Beauty products so far. Most of the scenes, this is a pretty accurate shade, but in the ball scene, it looked like there was more of an orangey shade right in the center of the apples of the cheeks, so I took some Coralista blush from Benefit and pat it on. And time for some Benefit brows. I practiced this Daphne look over the week, and I wasn't even going to do the makeup. I thought I didn't transform at all very well um, into Daphne, but you guys seem to like the look, so I'm doing it, and a major part of Daphne's look is her mostly straight eyebrows, and they're quite high, so it was kind of a challenge to lift up my head of my brow, but I started with the shade 2.75 of the Benefit Precisely My Brow, which is great for auburn hair, and then I'm creating a couple strokes at the front of the brow, not bringing them any closer, just higher. And then following that line straight into my arch, I'm taking 3.5, which is the shade I normally use, and I'm adding in some depth to blend my darker brow hairs in. Again, be sure to follow Linda J. Pierce MUA for exact products used and more like behind the scenes stuff. This is just my take on it. And now that the brows are as best as I can get them, I've set with a bit of light powder. And then I picked up the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion as that was used, and I have not used an eye primer in so long, totally forgot about them. For nose contour, this is just for fun and totally optional, but my goal was to create a thinner nose bridge, a taller, longer nose, so with the shade Nudie from Too Faced, I started sculpting a smaller bridge between my eyes. 
and then I wanted my nose to appear a bit more bony so for this transformation I used a angled brush and I'm creating slightly sharp lines and then blotting it out with my finger. With natural looks like this if you want it to be no makeup makeup of course skip nose contouring or accentuate your own natural divots in your nose. This is just something fun I like to do for a recreation photo and it's a bit of a challenge. For shadows, I thought this Too Faced palette was perfect. It's the Natural Mattes and I use this all the time for a quick look. On Daphne, Linda used mulch all over the lid and past the socket line. I went with the shade Less Is More and you want to extend it into a outer V shape. Oh, Natural faded under the lash line to softly complete the look and then just doing some touch ups here. I popped on a matte peach to brighten up the lid. For eyeliner, take Risky Business or Brune from MAC and draw this on the outer lash line and smoke out onto the lid slightly so it looks really natural. Another exact product that I picked up is one I've never tried. It's the Clinique Power Lash Mascara in Dark Chocolate. It does not look clumpy or heavy at all. It's definitely a perfect mascara for on screen or a barely there makeup look. For some ball scenes, Linda used Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk, and when the lips appeared a bit more naturally flushed, Pixie by Petra Gel was used. I decided to go with my favorite lip liner, Iconic Nude from Charlotte Tilbury, to reshape my top lip. I'm creating a bit of a puffier shape, and I'm underlining my bottom lip, and I find Iconic Nude is a bit more believable than Pillow Talk for reshaping. And then her lips looked like a natural light cool tone pink in this scene. I had this Burt's Bees crayon and I lightly applied and then blotted it off. Finally, can't forget Daphne's super cute beauty mark. If you're using this for like a Daphne costume or cosplay, um, or maybe you just want a beauty mark, I just added that. And there is the subtle Daphne makeup that I recreated using some of my favorite products as well as some exact products on the show and everything will be linked down below. For this hairstyle, I'm going to work from top to bottom, so first split your hair in a center part and then brush back the crown so your part doesn't trail off at the back. With two side sections, curl going away from your face, we just want some movement because we're going to pin the section up for half up half down style. I'm using the Bedhead Curly Pop Wand. I use this so often, I did break off the top, usually there's like a black tip at the end, so you'll see my hair kind of falls off the wand and I constantly am recurling that end piece to be a ringlet shape. That's the curl type that Daphne has, so what we're gonna go for throughout this look. So to make a ringlet curl with a small wand, make sure the hair lies flat around the barrel so that you get a perfect curl, rather than if you quickly wrap your hair around, you'll twist your hair a bit and you'll get more of a spiral curl. Um, so yeah, we definitely want the ringlet curl and as it cools, you can scrunch it in place and this kind of fluffs it up. And then before we clip in the bangs, which are totally optional, take out some face framing wispy pieces. Picking up that first curl, loosening up and bobby pinning to the back of the head. Follow up with a second and third piece. I like to pin piece by piece so we get a soft, pretty texture. And a tip so this look is polished, make sure as you're pinning at the back that your hair is still brushed over the crown. For the little bangs, I used these in the last Daphne tutorial as well, and as I mentioned, they're the under layer of a full set of bangs from Bellamy. And then I added a darker brown to the top of them. I cut them myself, but they don't have a clip anymore, so I'm bobby pinning them in place. Then take the first layer that we've pinned into the half up, half down do, and place it over the band as much as possible. If you really want to wear these faux bangs out to like a party or a wedding, I would recommend adding a headband or like a little braid to cover the band because it will hide it better. But for this look, we are going to add an accessory to distract later, so I think it's fine as it is, and make sure those front pieces are curled. But first, take those curly ends and pin up into a bun so that when you're looking from front on, you have a peak of the curly updo.
Pick up a small piece and curl towards the face, keeping that ringlet shape, and place into the beginning of that bun. Leave the ends hanging down on this one and keep the pinned up curls slightly more to the right side of the head. As I go, if any pieces are sticking out too much, I just correct with a bobby pin and I have about four curls that I've pinned more to the right toppling down. And I'm going to add a couple rhinestone flower clips in a soft U shape. Super cute and not too hard to do and for the rest of the hair curl towards your face and once again keep trying to get that ringlet shape. I've used this wand in so many looks, I definitely recommend it, and it doesn't break easily, I just really dropped this thing. And once all the curls are in place, move the hair to the back. Pick up a curl, piece apart slightly so that it's soft and fluffier, and then pin up into the bun. We're going to continue this, but start pinning lower so we get a tapered look and make sure some of the ends are still adding to the volume at the back flowing from the first pin curls. Throughout styling, I love using the OGX Bamboo Fiber Full Big Hairspray. I use this almost exclusively. I find it's the easiest to lock in my styles. It's a little long, so I pinned up some of the bottom curls to be more of Daphne's length. And there is the flowing curls with quite a bit of volume through the center. One of my favorite companies is called Cafune Headpieces, so if you want to wear something like this but you don't want it to look like a costume, I just made this little tiara with like craft supplies, um, but maybe you want to do something more for like a bridal style or prom, you should definitely check out Cafune's gorgeous headpieces. And then my outfit is a bodysuit from Revolve. I will have it linked down below and I added pearl stickers to the sleeves for fun and we can't forget the fan and some accessories. I love this style so much, it reminds me of the Phantom of the Opera tutorial I did but without any extensions. And I've been having so much fun on TikTok these days so make sure you follow me, it's Jackie.Wires on TikTok for more Bridgerton and pop culture TikToks. If you want more Daphne hairstyles, if you missed my last series of hairstyles, that is linked to watch next. Or if you want another regal tutorial, check out the Elizabeth Swan Pirates of the Caribbean No Makeup Makeup Look and Updo, and I'll see you guys in my next video.